Aidan Campbell and Joanna Wells. We're recording this podcast a day after the Australian federal government has announced a 50% subsidy for holiday flights to certain destinations throughout Australia. We want to look at that from a pricing perspective and ask, you know, what should you be looking for and will it actually boost travellers? Yeah, and also looking at it from, you know, the pricing team's perspective, what prices, you know, are they going to set uh, for, for, you know, their retail price? Are they going to go higher than usual or are they going to, because they know there's going to be a 50% discount or are they going to keep within range? And what is their range when they normally did like dynamic pricing? So there's a lot of questions to be asked. That, I'd be honest, that was one of my first thoughts. If you're a, a pricing person at Qantas or Jetstar or, or Virgin, and you know that customers, if you charge 100 bucks, and then uh, customers will get a 50%, I don't know exactly how it works, but you'll get a 50% discount from the government. Um, you know, would you be tempted to slightly push up your prices? You know, move it from $100 up to 120 So that, that's something we, we, we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I don't know the answer in that. Maybe they will, maybe they won't. I think this all comes back down to, you know, price positioning. If you, if you if you think about, you know, how you set prices, just because you can set prices higher, um, does that mean you should? How does that affect the brand? How does it affect the reputation of the business? These are all very serious considerations, as well as, you know, the amount of attention that will be on the, the newly released uh, prices. Uh, both from you know regulators, consumers, everybody's watching. Everybody's very interested. <laughs> Obviously, going away now, especially at Easter time, is 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 on people's minds. People are weighing up whether they should or not. Um, in in fact, you know, I, I imagine Qantas, uh, Virgin are very interested to, to get that kind of feedback, market feedback, intel about what customers are going to do. Are they not just going to be willing to pay more or less? Um, are they actually willing to go on holiday at all, knowing that you know borders could close, announcements could be made a- about COVID, lock- lockdowns can happen instantaneously, and people will be stranded. So this is on everybody's mind. Now, how does this affect pricing? Yeah, you know, I, th- I think looking back to that, that first question, how do you even set prices? You know, I think we've discussed on this show numerous times how the, the, the travel industry was probably leading the way with uh, revenue management tools, you know, computer programs. But let's be honest, the history of a year ago doesn't, it's not really relevant anymore. Does it, if somebody flew on Easter holidays 2019, has that got any, any impact whatsoever on whether they'll, they'll fly this year? The answer is probably not. So how would you even start setting prices? Um, like, let's be honest, all airlines at the moment have excess capacity. It's not as if there aren't flights available if, if internally if you wanted them. So th- that's not the problem affecting the airlines. So, you know, how would you set those prices? I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really know. Um, what is the, the methodology they're using in, in the airlines? It'd be interesting to hear from some of those people. And also, um, like, is it based on historical metrics or is it just based on more of a value-based approach based on today? Well, we are certainly in unprecedented times. There are no benchmarks. The past data, as Aidan was saying, is not very relevant to today. So, you know, what were they doing before? They were using algorithmic pricing to set their prices. They were using uh, advanced AI and pricing software. Um, Now, are they using that now? Um, No. Uh, looking at a, a very recent example from United Airlines in America, they actually had to shut down their pricing software because due to the crisis, the, the algorithm was massively reducing the rates uh, of the fares down to almost rock bottom prices. Uh, based on the market conditions, the availability, supply and demand. It just didn't make sense. Um, so what they had to do is they had to step in very quickly and just shut it down. Now, their pricing team are stepping up to the fore and are leading uh, the price setting process yet again. Now, the same is undoubtedly happening 
all over the world because the pricing algorithms set in the systems just don't make sense for now. Yes, they were logical for a market that was stable and set up for a particular uh, scenario or market conditions, but now things have radically changed and you can't just tweak the system. It takes a long time to reset algorithms. So they then it does live, just shut them, shut them down. So even here today, I would imagine the pricing team in, in leading airlines are very, very uh, busy um, and, and they're thinking, okay, what, uh, and they're setting new hypotheses about, about customers because customers um, and the willingness to pay, how they're thinking about travel are leading this discussion. And data on this, I imagine, would be anecdotal. Um, it'd be um, based on a lot of assumption. So I would say to a certain degree, it, you know, their pricing will be the same. Um, but that doesn't mean that it can't be scientific and done uh, scientifically using, uh, you know, hy hypotheses and testing and learning and trials. Um, at the same time, it's very important, as I said, to, to bear in mind all those other things like business strategy, you know, what you intend to do in, in the three, six, nine months from now, but also what, what the airline wants to be in, in three, five years from now, because you've still got to maintain that as your point of reference to, to understand what you're going to do now, because you don't want your tactics to drive your strategy because you can ruin your future uh, business strategy. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I think the airlines, talking about the future, obviously they've got their eyes on the future, but this is seen, I suppose, as being promoted by the government as a way to safeguard those jobs, safeguard those industries, so they, so they will have a future. Look, I, I have serious questions as to whether this is an efficient use of taxpayer money, whether it w really will boost people travelling or wanting to travel. I personally think there's a lot of pent-up demand for holidays and travel. I think people... What's holding people back is not necessarily paying fifty dollars versus a hundred dollars or or whatever it is. I, I I think the elasticity of demand, it, it's it's almost to some extent a bit inelastic at the moment. You could increase prices and, and people would still travel. I think what's holding people back is more, it's, it's not a pricing related aspect. It's it's the risk. It's um you know whether you get to Queensland or Perth or where, wherever it is, and whether halfway ten minutes before landing you're told you'll be spending two weeks in a quarantine facility let's be honest that's a bit of a dampener on the holiday mood so i think that's what holding people back I, I think also you know the fear that governments will just shut down willy-nilly personally at this point i don't think many australians are fearful of a of covid to that extent i think they're fearful of you know wasting their money wasting their two weeks holiday and and the horrific implications of sitting in a in a holiday or in a hotel room, uh, not being allowed out in fresh air for two weeks, you know that that puts people off. Whether saving fifty dollars on a fare will will compensate them for that and make them confident, you know that's another question. I suppose just the one thing I'd, I'd add on that one, maybe when the government is spending this money, it can be seen as, you know, the federal government to some extent vouching for or pressurising state governments not to lock down again, not to to, to shut down borders. You know, obviously, if they did, it would just be seen as literally flushing taxpayer money down the toilet. So, you know, I think people might get more confidence that if 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 the taxpayer money is being used to finance this stuff, maybe there's some, you know, some brains behind it. I, I recall when you know, I think it was before Christmas, and I think the airlines wanted people to get back using it. You know. The, flights and going on holiday again and there was a, like a huge massive sale uh, for interstate uh, border holidays uh, to Queensland etc Perth and so many people were obviously needed the holiday then and and they and they went for it uh, bought those tickets um, uh, and then and then after that there was a, a, a surge in increase uh, there was a massive increase in prices there was because the de demand was quite high and I think it exceeded the tr the normal price range at that time even for uh, you know accounting for seasonality and it being Christmas time people were complaining that you know going to Queensland for holiday was extortionate um, so after a, a initial huge sale 
there was a massive increase that exceeded the, the, the range. So that that was interesting. And I, and I do wonder, you know, even though that wasn't a government sponsored thing, whether that trend will happen again, or what the airline in, industry learned from that. Or even as Aizen was saying, because they learned after that, that, you know, after they did that, there were lockdowns, uh, especially in Melbourne, people had to drive back in their cars over Christmas and stay on the, the highway for some people had to stay on it for days to get back in. Now, will the airlines now provide some risk mitigation here? Will there be extra flights in case? Will there be more sort of logistics in place for people to get back home? Or will, you know, the flight schedule just be the same? Uh, are they going to be running the flights, um, you know, pretty bare because they want to ensure that the you know costs are down and the running costs are down or are they going to be you know bumping up that supply but just to just to be you know sure and if they did that then that would make any price increase quite justifiable but it's just it'll be interesting to know kind of what the plan is yeah i think like personally my view is over the last 12 months you know is there a plan yep, probably not um, you know, you, you could even look at a scenario, I don't think any betting, betting person would, would guarantee that borders will not close at the drop of a hat at any point over the next couple of weeks. You know, what happens to the airlines if they've collected funds for flights that then all have to be cancelled? Will that be covered by insurance? Will these airlines have the money to refund these customers? You know, let's be honest, there's a very high chance of that happening given slow rollout of, you know, of, of, of vaccines, etc., slower in Australia than was even forecast. So generally when people want a holiday, they want a vacation to relax, to, to unwind, to get away from things. Is that the product or service you would be purchasing when you buy the holiday? You know, when you book that week up in Cairns or Port Douglas or, or, or wherever you want to go. Um, I think it's a bit like the one we covered on the, the cruise ship stuff we covered in a, in a previous episode. And with that, we, d- we did say that maybe it's a bit of hope over experience. People are purchasing hope. They're booking a holiday for the future that gives them hope that this stuff is over, that there is something to look forward to. So maybe that's part of it. Maybe it's a national positivity week, etc. And, you know, I think that that gives people, you know, a real positive view of the future and something to look forward to. So, so I hope that's accurate. I know a lot of other people you know you have to wear masks etc on the flights and in airlines you know is that the holiday mood is that something people really want to do and to be honest i would expect that will dampen the spirit also you know at the end of the day when you walk through a shopping center people can wear masks in sydney if they want to 99 percent of people choose not to so clearly people vote with their feet and people don't want to wear these things so it is that is going to be a question especially in the longer flights up to cairns etc or, or, or perth so it, it's all to be seen i suppose what they found um in america recently is that the people that were going to go on holiday or use um airplanes had a very specific reason and they would they, they were going to fly regardless of the price so offering discounts or heavy discounts didn't really matter um, and that the rest of the rest of the population weren't going to go anyway because of the covid restrictions so maybe that logic still applies now and using sort of a mass you know discount subsidization to drive uh, people to drive demand Um, looks unlikely to work because we're still coming out of a very serious crisis and a lot of people are still very cautious and have safety and health in mind but saying that is it right to then if you know this that there's going to you know this comes down to segmentation there's going to be a segment that are going to fly anyway and that they're willing to pay the price to do so for whatever reason it is should they be paying uh, uh, an excessive uh, markup uh, on the traditional flight price for for doing so? Because that will impact um, um, reputation and business strategy. They'll, they'll remember people remember that sort of thing. And you know, yes, you, they'll pay for that right now. But you know, as soon as things get uh, more stable, they'll be looking for alternatives um, and uh, and thinking about you know businesses that treated them well um, when things were tough. Yeah, like I think a lot of people at the moment are very, you know, feel for the airlines, they feel for the people, the staff, the the pilots, the air cabin crew, the the ground handlers, people feel for them, they feel for the people in holiday resorts, they want to support them in this country, there's that attitude, you know, but at the same time, 
there's still a big lack of trust with with the state governments. There's a lack of trust that you know the holiday you book will be will be available. And you know, is it worse not to have booked a holiday or to have a holiday snatched away from you at at the last moment? I'm not sure. So it, it's all to be seen. I personally would love a holiday. I think 90% of the world's population could do with a, a break after what we've been through the last 12 months. Um, will reju- I, I personally think the demand for st- interstate travel, certainly interstate, I'm not so sure about international, but interna- interstate is probably reasonably priced inelastic. I think a certain percentage of people will not travel currently given fears of COVID, but another percentage of people will you know, they couldn't care less and they just want to get back to the to the old ways. So I don't think dropping price by 50 bucks or 100 bucks is really going to influence that. But again, I've been wrong in the past, so let's see. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree. Uh, there's a lot of reasons why it's not a particularly good idea from a pricing strategy perspective. But, you know, it seems that they're using the age old, you know, economics 101 theory. This is the government to to drive demand. Um, and they're not thinking about uh, pricing as pricing managers do um, by segmentation and pick value drivers and that really, be, you know, segment of one and the, the thinking about it holistically. You look, hope, hopefully it'll work, you know, uh, best yeah. of luck but anyway just a final point there also is a question of equity in this really whereby the people who have lost out most from the covert lockdowns restrictions have been young people people in more probably less secure employment they're probably not in a position to really go off and enjoy themselves a week's holiday somewhere interstate so you know to some extent what we're doing is we're using government taxpayers money to basically subsidize potentially people who can already afford to book the trip and would have booked the trip anyway so like is it a, is it a bit of a pork barrel thing to to subsidize people who don't need that subsidy subsidy i would argue yes but you know i've got my own political views and to some extent government nearly always finds new ways to waste money so not really surprised yeah on that bombshell i think we'll leave it there yeah thanks a lot